my name is Lucretia Washington. Um, I am the director for juvenile justice here in Carroll County. I am also the chair of this task force. Um, so we're gonna get started this morning. Everyone please sign into the chat. Um, we're gonna go over a couple of little things first, then we'll have our guest speakers come on and talk. And after they are complete, we will go through the roster and see what everybody's got going on right now. Um, as we all know, this is a collaborative contact for everybody um, to help find resources and stuff for the people that we work with. So when you know what's going on with all the different um, contacts we have on this meeting. So um, QPR training <clears throat> is gonna be September 29th at four o'clock PM at City Station. Um, it's a 75 minute training. Um, and I don't want to mess up her name, Gila. Miss Amira will be hosting that. Um, I don't want to mess up her last name. It's difficult. Yeah. Um, but it's a really good train. If you haven't had it or are able to take it, um, I suggest you do so. Um, I had QPR training a couple of years ago, and it's very informative. Um, we also need more help getting our vitality survey completed. Um, I believe they can go on the Family Connections website and do that. Is that correct, Ms. Gila? Yes, and on the agenda, they have a link, but I am going to put it on the on the chat. But it's it also in our website. And it doesn't take long. So um, the website, by the way, is looking great. Gila's done a great job with that. Um, it's in English and Spanish for the most part, which is amazing. Um, we have a huge Latino population in Carroll County and now they can get the services and, and find out where to go as well because they can finally have something they can understand and read. So that's nice. Um, <clears throat> Ms. Gill, if you are ready, we'll start with our first speaker this morning. Her name is Ms. Rebecca Cranford and she is from the Out of the Darkness Walk. Ms. Rebecca, the floor is all yours. Right, well, very good. And I, you know, I must admit uh, first, um, uh, time presented to this group. So I'm not sure, you know, how long you'd like me to talk five minutes, 10 minutes, you let me know, I could uh, use as much uh, time as you'll give me. But uh, at this point, I'm just putting on a brief update. Is that appropriate? Yeah, so, um, so the uh, uh, American Foundation for Suicide Prevention uh, sponsors uh, what they call out of the darkness walks, they uh, exist across the country across a variety of communities, um, just an opportunity for the community to come out and support um, folks who have been in some way uh, touched by suicide. Um, my daughter and I co-chaired the very first um, Out of the Darkness Walk last year. It occurred at Hobbs Farm. Some of you were in attendance, some of you were sponsors. Um, if it wasn't for Gila and Jody Goodman, I don't know that my daughter and I would have ever been able to get it off the ground. So um, absolutely, um, you know, just very appreciative of, of the group here and the support. So our event this year is uh, on October 30th. It is, um, the walk begins at four, but the activities really start at three. Uh, so we have about an hour and a number of things that go on. Uh, there'll be a memory wall there, which is sort of standard fare at all of the uh, uh, out of the darkness walks, an opportunity for people to, um, you know, remember loved ones and, uh, and honor them. There's a bead ceremony uh, that also takes place that sort of enables people to uh, sort of walk through their affiliation or how they've been touched um, by suicide. And then we have uh, art stations and signs and entertainment. The David Pippin Band will be our entertainment this year. So some of you uh, may know David uh, and, and his band. So um, just looking for help spreading the word. We have various ways to do that. We do have paper flyers. We have yard signs. We have, uh, there's a fantastic uh, website that the um, sort of AFSP helps us put together. So anything that folks here could do to help us spread the word in that way, we'd be very grateful. Um, if you're interested in tabling at the event, we had a lot of really good involvement last year. 
had almost uh, 500 people from the community show up. So it was a very well attended event. We're hopeful it will be this year as well. You can contact me um, and, uh, and I'll put, I'll drop my information in the chat. Uh, of course, becoming a sponsor, um, forming a team. I know, um, you know, both the, the Carroll County Mental Health um, and the Youth Mental Health Task Force have formed teams and we're very appreciative uh, of that. Uh, so anything you can do to help us get the word out, help us um, engage with the community would be uh, greatly appreciated. So I'll, I'll stop there. I think I've probably communicated um, all the relevant information about the walk. Does anyone have any questions for me or comments? I will say that um, CMHA does have a team again this year. So um, y'all can join their team or make up your own. Um, they're very involved. So I think it's a good thing. Um, but yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah. Thank you for that. I will get, um, for those of you who know Rob Dial at Park, and, and I, I believe some of the folks on the call have received invitations, but I do. My day job is I work at Southwire, and uh, and uh, <laughs> so um, we are uh, Southwire. Uh, it will be sponsoring, and we'll also be sponsoring sort of a community um, discussion around um, you know suicide prevention. We have AFSP coming in to do mm -hmm. some training, and Rob has graciously agreed to kind of work the logistics of uh, um, bringing in various members of the community. So we're. I think working on two sessions, the first of which would be in October, and then we'll likely do a second one in November, December. So also be on the lookout as I look across the members attending today. I think that it would make a lot of sense to engage uh, some of you folks in, in that as well. So, so thank you. Um, I appreciate Patricia the opportunity to speak. Thank you very much, Ms. Rebecca. Um, Hey, Ron, everyone, you come on to please sign into the chat so we have a record of who is, who is present today. And we're rolling to our next speaker. Our next speaker is Ms. Lindsay Williamson, and she's from Families Count, who does parenting. Um, I am familiar because I am on the CHINS uh, treatment team as well, and I know they're doing some stuff through CHINS. So, Ms. Williamson, the floor is all yours. Thanks. Thanks for letting me share today, guys. Um, so, Families Count is a six week parenting class and mentoring program that's offered through local churches. Um, and it is to assist either at risk parents who are working toward permanency or just parents who need some stability and support um, and are looking to move their families in a healthy, stable direction. Um, it's a trauma informed and holistic program that has four main goals that are based on the five protective factors. Um, so the four main goals are to provide some purpose, some hope, um, practical skills, and then connection with a support system. So I'm just going to tell briefly what the six classes are that these parents go through so you can get an idea of what they learn. Um, the first is that families are meant to be successful. And so we talk about um, the purpose and benefit of a family unit. We talk about each parent's individual strengths and abilities that they possess and, um, and how they can serve their families through those. Um, the second is we talk about families of origin and how they affect our families today. And so we talk about generational learned behaviors and negative cycles and things like that. Um, the third is that families function as teens. So we talk about parents' roles versus children's roles and how um, damage happens when those are reversed. Um, the fourth is that we talk about families thrive with discipline. So we talk about punishment versus discipline. And um, we talk about alternatives to physical punishment and what it means to lay a foundation of trust um, in parenting your children. The fifth is that families were created with purpose and for permanency. And so we talk about the importance of permanency for um, children and how practical things like budgeting and job interview skills and things like this can serve um, your family in moving toward permanency. And then the sixth and maybe most important is that broken families can be restored. And so we, we talk about hope and vision um, for breaking cycles in um, families, negative cycles. 
So, um, so those are the six classes that the parents are involved in. The other thing is that parents are um, matched with what we call a parent advocate. And this is just a mentor, but we like to call it an advocate because not everybody wants to be mentored. <laughs> um, and these are all trained members from local churches, like the host church has members that are trained who um, act really just as a friend, a resource, a support system, and a transportation um, person for if these families need transportation to the class. Um, so we provide transportation if needed. Um, we, we start off our class with a big family style meal. So parents and their kids come, um, the group that cooks the food from the church comes and it feels like a big normal church family meal. Um, and it's really one of the highlights of this program because it provides just like some normalcy for these families where not a lot of things are normal. Um, and then we also provide childcare if it's needed. Right now, the parents that we are um, getting referrals for are from CHINS and also from our local school system. Um, so we have our second class. We, we had a um, class, our first like inaugural six week class was at Midway in the spring. We're on week two of classes um, currently. And then we have a new round of classes set to start at Midway on November 3rd, Wednesday, November 3rd. Um, so if any of you guys want to refer or have us um, reach out to families that might benefit from this class, you can contact me. Um, I can put my contact info in the chat. And I would say the biggest need that we have, because this is um, growing and it's an, it's an easy way for church members to get involved in their community, but it does take some um, resources from the local churches to pull this off. It's kind of a big endeavor for a church to pull off. So we're looking for a few more churches in our, in Carroll County who are willing to host Families Count and um, go through the training that it takes to um, to host it at their church. So if any of you know of churches that might be interested in talking to me, I would love to reach out to them as well. And I'm happy to answer any questions. I've got a couple. Um, mm -hmm. How long is the program? Is it six weeks? Is that the... Six weeks and the classes are three hours. So it, all, it meets the 18 hour requirement if it's a court mandated class. Okay. Um, it meets those requirements. And then we have a seventh week, we have a, a graduation party. So we let these parents graduate, they'll invite their families and things like that. So neat. Okay. And what churches are currently involved? Do you know? Currently, maybe? yep. Currently Midway is and um, King's Chapel. Um, have y'all contacted Southern Hills? Um, I, ha I have not, I don't have a good contact for Southern Hills now. All right. I would love to. I do. Okay. Um, I'll get your stuff from Miss Gill and I'll send it. Okay. Because they're very involved in a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, they do a lot of stuff in the community, and I know that this is something that they would hook on to most likely. Yeah. So I'll get it from Gill and I'll send it to Shannon. Okay. And it's not a question, but I just wanted to. Um, come in Lindsay and her program Kelly and I were just talking with the family who just started last week and she loved the program like she is so excited to go back all of her children are coming with her this time she just says it's a really good program and she's so excited to be involved with it mm -hmm. and I think it's great because parenting is not easy y'all <laughs> especially with the way the world is right now it's really not easy um, you know, it's easier when I was raised my child, she's 28 and it still wasn't easy, but now, you know, I see these families every day with what I do. Um, and I see the struggles and I see, you know, especially when you have these parents who had these children young, um, and didn't really get parenting themselves from their parents, they need some extra help. So the support y'all are providing and the, and the, the teaching y'all are providing these parents is amazing. So thank y'all very much. <clears throat> Gil will have Miss Williams' information. Um, she will send it out an email when we're done, like she does everything else after task force. So we appreciate that. And we'll go to our next um, speaker this morning. Thank you very much, Miss Williamson. It'll be Miss Shannon Lawson, and she's with Living Drug Free. So. 
Good morning, everyone. Uh, Shannon Lawson. I have been with you in the past and presented, and I just wanted to, um, Gila gave me this time, and I appreciate that, just to update the collaborative on the community showcase events and for those, or event, excuse me, for Carroll County. Um, <clears throat> so I, uh, do prescription drug abuse prevention, do, sorry. I provide prescription drug abuse prevention services for uh, my agency, the Council on Alcohol and Drugs for different um, areas of the state. My main area that I work in um, is Thomaston, Upson County, but I'm working currently in a small project, um, one year project uh, uh, that is allowing me to work in Carrollton to provide um, a community showcase event that is to um, reduce stigma and increase awareness around uh, prescription drugs, or excuse me, opioid um, overdose prevention. And so through this collaborative, back in early summer, I was able to make a great connection, or maybe even May, great connection with Jamie. Um, oh, mercy, her last name has left me. Jamie, I'm sorry if you're on the call. Um, thank you. Um, <clears throat> and uh, at, at University of West Georgia, and we are able, um, we are uh, having our event there in Carrollton on the campus at University of West Georgia. And it's actually a, um, I wanted to get the name correctly. So it's through their wellness uh, department and um, benefit and HR department. They provide a wellness and prevention fair for their staff, faculty and staff um, every year. Uh, and so we are able to partner with UWG there uh, October 18th and table at that event and have our information and be able to share that along with other vendors, I believe, that they have at that event. But it's, uh, it is, um, I don't want to use the word catered, but it is uh, su fully supporting the staff there um, to uh, have all their prevent preventative services kind of in one, uh, one setting, but then also um, through their health insurance provider, but then also uh, have other uh, wellness and health uh, information for staff members and also students. Um, so I wanted to give that update. It's October 18th. Gila and I have been in uh, communication with that. And um, we that day will be giving out medicine safes and uh, drug disposal kits. And what I wanted to present to the collaborative today uh, with Gila's uh, permission and blessing is if you are would like to participate as a collaborative member um, at helping at those uh, that at our table, our tables, um, there's uh, presented before there's about five deliverables that five pieces of information that we uh, must share or are encouraged to share with this current funding um, around opioid uh, overdose prevention. And it just helps when it's more than just me sharing the five things. It's easy information. Pretty much everything has a, um, a flyer or a piece of something that you can share with the person the information that they can then leave with. And then at the end, I'm uh, at the end of our little uh, tabling part, there's a little survey if the people will participate. Um, but I would love to have uh, help if you wanna reach out to Gila and you're available the 18th. Um, we would love to have some interaction from collaborative members. Also, it'll be a great way to interface with the college and the collaborative. Um, and I, I hope I'm not over speaking, but I know as far as, um, the collaborative that I'm a part of in Upson, we're always looking to um, collaborate and, and interface with many myriad uh, of partners across the community. And we, um, we don't have a university in Thomaston, but we do have a, a technical college that we um, work with uh, diligently. And um, so it's, I just wanted to present that and Gila was on board. And if you are wanting to help um, reach out to either one of us. My contact information is in the chat. And that was, um, Alexandra, I, I know you're, you're reaching out to me. I got you. I emailed you uh, just a minute, second ago. I, you're on my list, sis. So thank you. We're going to get in touch this week. Thank you, Gila, for the time. No, thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. And I am going to create a form so they can sign up and we can okay. together and help. Perfect. Perfect. And the, the timing is a little, um, I think it's 10 to three that day the, for the majority. Um, you know, they have specific um, uh, services being offered for faculty to sign up 
that have those health insurance services to sign up for like mammograms on site and, and um, other other entities that I'm not sure of from Tanner as far as like glucose testing and stuff. So some of that starts earlier, but that's specific to those areas. But the, the majority of the event, I think it's 10 to three, but I'll double check that time so we can um, kind of set up a schedule that way. Thank you so much for information. I know that um, I saw Ms. Merrill's face light up when you started talking about this event. So um, I know the CMHA is very involved in a lot of things like this. So um, that completes our speakers today. Ms. Lawson's information will be sent out in the email that Gila is sending out along with the sign-up sheet for the volunteer for the date of the 10, 8, of 10 18. Um, now we will go through and let y'all say what's going on with y'all um, and your organizations and stuff like that. So Miss Washington, Bridget Washington, you're the first one on my screen. So you're up, ma'am. Good morning, everyone. I'm Bridget Washington with Georgia Department of Early Care and Learning. I'm a community partnership coordinator. And so uh, I work with stakeholders and partners um, sharing information about early care and learning across 11 counties in central West Georgia, including Carroll. So I'm very happy to be here today um, to support you all's work. Um, the big thing coming up um, soon in regards to early care and learning is our Georgia Pre-K Week. And the date that we celebrate Georgia Pre-K is October 3rd through the 7th. And so if you have a chance to stop by any child care programs and read to their pre-K classrooms, um, arrange to make visits, um, that would, I encourage you to do so. Um, also, we have a grant opportunity that is open until the 29th of this month. I'm gonna share details in the chat where you can find the application. It's through SurveyMonkey. I heard it takes no more than two hours, but it is a community transformation grant and grants will be awarded to up to 10 um, entities across the state. The grant is $125,000 um, to each of the 10 communities, and it is for a term of 18 months. And so I'm really excited. I hope you all have a chance to click on the link and check it out and call me if you have any questions. My information is in the chat. Kelly Law, you're up next here. Hello, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm one of the two social workers at Carrollton City Schools, and I'm also the Families in Transition Coordinator, and I work with our homeless families. Um, I don't really have a lot to share as far as what's going on in our, in our system, but I'm here to gather information that's going on in our community and to bring back. Um, we currently have about 100 homeless students um, so far in the school year. We ended last year with about 225. Um, these are our families who are in motels, hotels, shelters, uh, the transitional shelter, or if they're doubled up living with another family due to um, eviction or economic hardship, mold, fire, those kind of situations. So if you know of any families um, dealing with these, these situations, please reach out to me. Thanks, Kelly. Brittany, you're next, honey. Brittany Barry. Good morning, everyone. I am the other social worker with Carrollton City Schools, and I cover our foster care um, students. We only have about seven students that are currently in foster care in our school system, um, so that's pretty good, but I know there are a lot more within Carroll County. Yeah. Thanks, Brittany. Lisa Merrill, you're next. Hello, I'm Lisa Merrill with Carroll County Mental Health Advocates. Um, we have several peer support programs and support group meetings. Um, every, um, on the first and third Monday of each month, 
At 5.30, we have NAMI family, which is support for family members, caregivers, and loved ones of someone that has a mental illness. Um, every Monday at 5.30, we have the double trouble and recovery meeting. Um, we have NAMI connection for the individuals, individual peers every Wednesday at 1 p.m. And we also have a survivors of suicide loss. If you've lost someone to suicide that meets on the third Tuesday um, from 7 to 9 p.m. Um, and the, the recovery spot of West Georgia, the new RCO, we now have one AA meeting. And they, the name of that meeting is the Vision for You. They meet every Thursday at 7 p.m. And the, the recovery spot of West Georgia, we're looking for people to host an array of recovery meetings. And just this past week uh, in, our NAMI meet, in our NAMI connection meeting, which is set up for people 18 and older, I had, a, I had six young men come in that were under the age of 17. Um, so I'm really seeing a big need and would like to get with you, Gila and, and Lee and, and anybody else in the community. I don't personally know of an Alateen meeting that is happening anywhere, but um, I would love to, for the recovery spot in West Georgia to be able to have an Alateen meeting and host that meeting here. Um, I would be willing to facilitate that meeting um, at least once a month if we could get some more people to, to help facilitate that meeting and get an Alateen meeting up and going. I think there's a huge need for it. And if anybody else um, would like to host a meeting, you can get in touch with us at Carroll County Mental Health Advocates and we can get you an application and, and see if we can get a support group meeting started. Thanks. Thank you, Lisa. Um, I will say CMHA is doing amazing things in this community. Um, I'm a little biased I'm on the board, but um, they are doing great things. So, Miss um, Melissa Prigmore, you're next, please. I hope I didn't mess up your name too bad. Okay. You're muted, dear. There you go. Yes, thank you. I'm sorry. You're fine. Thank you so much, ladies. I appreciate um, the opportunity to be here. Um, I am on here to find resources. I work for the Georgia Department of Defense as a soldier and family readiness specialist for the Georgia Army National Guard. And I cover the, I'm a resource person for um, 13 counties and Carroll County is one of my counties. So if you have guardsmen and family members living in Carroll County and they need community resources, you guys are the folks I'm gonna send them to. <laughs> Um, so that's why I'm here um, is to just support and, and learn what you guys are doing down there, what, they, what you have to offer. Um, a lot of our guards families, they are underemployed. Um, you have students in your schools. Um, so there's, there's a great need. And so that's, that's just what I do. Um, my information, my contact information is in the chat. So if you run up on a guards, uh, it, it can be anybody, I can service anybody, whether they're veterans, um, army guardsmen, air reserve, um, any of those family members and service members. And um, if there's anybody that you come into contact with, just please send them my way. Um, if they live in Carroll County, I service them. Um, I will send, we do have a fly, I do have a flyer. I didn't even think about it till I was on here. Um, the Georgia Guard Family Support Foundation works out of Clay National Guard headquarters in Marietta. We have our 11th annual assault on Kennesaw Mountain, and that is a 5K. It is in Kennesaw at the Kennesaw Mountain. It, it is a rigorous 5K, <laughs> um, but it is to support and honor the 43 guardsmen of the 48th Brigade who were lost and in, in, who have been killed in action. And so the proceeds go to the Georgia Guard Family Support Foundation. Um, I will send that to you, Ms. Ms. Gila, yes. Um, and um, who, what they do is when they, um, primarily what they do is if a guard member or family member, if they fall under financial crisis, um, they have grants and loans that they do. And most of them qualify for the grants up to $1,500 one time. Um, in their lifetime. So it helps support them when um, our guardsmen, when they find that they come back off of orders, um, they have to look for new work. They have to, uh, um, and they're used to getting paid 
a different on a different pay scale. And so they'll find themselves in a financial situation a lot of times. Uh, so that's what I do. If you have any military family members in your community, please send them my way. And I appreciate all that you guys do. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here, Melissa. We appreciate what you're doing out there. So um, the next one on my screen is Pat Harris. Good morning, everybody. This is Patricia Harris from the Josephine Center. We are actively involved in the community by providing educational and self-sufficiency services. Right now, we have partnered with many of you um, to provide food, hygiene, kits, books, clothing, anything you need right now. Uh, what we're doing is what we would do if we were in our center, which we are not as yet. So thank you for having me. Thank you, Ms. Harris. You have a good day. Thanks for joining us. Um, Ms. Walton. Good morning. Uh, my name is Liddy Walton. I'm with the Carroll County Emergency Shelter, the domestic violence shelter here for um, Carroll County. We service five counties in the West Georgia area. Um, we are going to be hosting our first annual uh, fall festival, October 15th from 10 to two at the club fitness parking lot. Um, we're gonna have uh, vendors, food, raffle, um, prizes, face painting for the community. We also going to have a trunk or treat. If you are um, interested in coming on board and having a uh, table um, and being a vendor, you're more than welcome. We still have spots. If you would like to have a or provide a trunk or a trunker for the trunk or treat, you know, I can always send you the information and the links to um, sign up. Thank you very much, Ms. Walton. <clears throat> and next we have Ms. Rose Simpson. Hi, hey, good morning. Um, I'm Rose with the Carrollton Housing Authority. Um, currently we're just dealing with a bunch of transitions in the office. Um, I've transitioned out of our family self-sufficiency coordinator position, um, and I'm now in a new position we created, which is the special purpose coordinator. Currently, all of our housing programs, they are still closed um, due to our waiting list being over two years long. Um, so we like to tell the public and our families that we will advertise um, on our website, which is carrolltonhousingauthority.com as well as in the Times Georgia newspaper when any of those programs reopen. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Sad that the wait list is two years long. That's just sad. Um, Ms. Mary Sale, you're next, please, ma'am. Okay, um, I'm the WIOA coordinator at West Georgia Technical College. Um, I think we're getting pretty well uh, situated here in our new location, uh, you know, getting used to the new building and our way around and everything. Uh, as far as WIOA, right now, we're really wanting to focus on those that are uh, individuals that are dislocated or unemployed uh, to try to help them, you know, get their credentials. You know, we assist them with the tuition books fees, you know, any kind of equipment that's required for the training classes. But we really want to try and help those individuals so that they can go out uh, and uh, gain employment, you know, where they can become self-sufficient. So if you know anyone that's uh, unemployed or has been dislocated due to a closing, please send them our way. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sale. Tanika Williams, you're next, please, ma'am. Hello, um, can y'all hear me? Awesome. Um, hey, uh, my name is Tanika Williams. I am the WIOA WorkSource Three Rivers Youth Career Facilitator. Um, and what I do is I help youth between the ages of 16 through 24 who are um, either out of school already or they have not graduated from school, but is, um, is almost about ready to drop out or if they have just dropped out of school um, basically what we do is we help them get their GEDs, we help them go to school, um, we cover tuition, um, we help with financial aid, we basically kind of hold their hands all the way through 
um, until they have um, gotten some types of credentials um, that will help them be self-sufficient. We also um, have a WEX program, which is a work experience program where they have 480 hours um, and we pay a company to, um, to basically train them and to give them a job. And hopefully that particular company will eventually hire them um, on full time. Um, and so if you know of any companies that need help um, and that would like free labor, <laughs> please let me know. Um, if you know of any kids that are 16 and 24 that may need a job or that may need some type of um, help getting in school or getting their GED, please let me know. I signed my own son up for my program <laughs> so that he could work through the summer because kids are expensive and I just, yeah. So <laughs> if you know anybody, please let me know. Um, my number and my email is in the chat. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much, Ms. Williams. Um, next on my screen is Ms. Abigail Clifford. Good morning. I'm Abigail Clifford with District 4 Public Health. I manage the Chronic Disease Prevention Program there. And I just wanted to point everyone to our new community health assessment that we have published in the last two months. I'll drop the link in the chat. Um, each of our 12 counties has their own community health assessment. It is full of data points, local data, national data. So I encourage you to spend a couple minutes on that this morning. Thank you. That should be interesting. Thank you very much. Patrick? Hi, I'm Patrick from the Rafa Clinic of West Georgia. Um, the one thing that I do have um, that is happening is actually happening this Thursday, and it is our Sound of Medicine event. Um, it's going to take place. I just had it pulled up. I'm sorry. Give me one second. Um, but yeah, so it's this Thursday. We're having, um, we used to do it at Milltown uh, Music Hall. But uh, because of the renovations, we are switching locations and venues, and we're going to have it at the Hamilton McPherson Fine Arts Center. Uh, the event is Thursday. It starts at 6.30, ends at 9.30. It's an in-person musical concert and fundraiser featuring performances by physicians, healthcare providers, and their talented family members. Uh, I'm running the silent auction, so if anybody has anything that they want to put into the silent auction, my information's in the chat. Uh, you can just call me. I'll put my email in there too. Um, but but yeah, so we're trying to raise funds for the clinic. Uh, this is our big one-time fundraiser. I mean, we do two fundraisers a year, but this is one of our big ones. So um, if you have any questions or anything, I'll just put my information in the chat and hope hopefully you guys can make it. So thanks. Patrick, do you have a flyer about that fundraiser or anything you sent to Ms. Gila? Yeah, I already sent it to Gila. So okay. she, um, I think she, I, she must have got it. I think so. So, but yeah, okay. thank you so much. That way she gave it out. Thank you, sir. No I problem. Did, thank you. Uh, I did. And it's on the chat and I already have it on the, it was in the last in newsletter. Okay. Perfect. Oh yeah. 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 Okay. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thanks Gila. Um, give me a second. I forgot. I've lost where I was. Brandy with Willowbrook. You're next, honey. Hey guys, good morning. I'm Brandy McLean with Willow Brook. Sorry, the light in my car is making me look real weird. Um, I just wanted to touch base really quick with you guys, um, update you. We are still having the Stop the Stigma event at Villarica High School next Thursday, the 29th at six o'clock. There will be a panel discussion with many of our psychiatrists, um, school-based therapists, um, community therapists, led by Kim Johnson, our director, um, one of our directors. Um, it's going to be a really awesome event. I think they're also um, doing like a televised version in Harrelson County, but it's at Villarica High School the 29th at 6 o'clock. Um, for anybody on this collaborative that has any questions about mental health services, substance abuse um, treatment services here in Carroll County, we do service Douglas, Paulding, Harrelson, um, Carroll, and out. Um, my information is in the chat as well. Please feel free to reach out. I'll be happy to talk with you more in depth about what we do and how we can connect anyone to services. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Brandy. I'll see you tomorrow. Um, yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. Um, Ms. Lana Aston, you're next, please, ma'am. Yes, good morning, everyone. I'm brand new to this, so I really appreciate the invite. 
I am with Peach State Health Plan. I am one of the resource mothers that are um, we currently um, help with um, pregnant ladies and um, kind of going over the new extension with the postpartum waiver and also with the um, Planning for Healthy Baby program. So I am brand new to Carrollton, um, uh, Carroll County. I'm trying to plant my plant some seeds here and plant my feet here. I'm also a new resident as well in Carrollton. So it's been almost a, a, a year in December since I've uh, moved here, but I am looking to um, kind of do some partnerships and maybe do some um, events for our um, pregnant members as well. We do um, baby showers for our pregnant members. And because I'm brand new to uh, the county, I do service Carroll County. Um, I uh, also service Douglas, Cobb, um, Paulding, and Harris Harrelson counties as well. So I kind of provide resources to the pregnant members that do need, um, you know, different various resources. So I am looking to kind of expand on my search of um, getting resources in Carroll County because we do have quite a, um, uh, a, a significant number of membership here in Carroll County. So um, I'm looking to work with some of you in the future and definitely um, if you come across any Peach State Health Plan members um, in need of or any resources or in need of anything, um, you can please um, send them my way. Thank you. I will definitely keep you guys abreast on any um, events. Like I said, I'm brand new. I'm looking to, to do some events here in Carroll County. I'm just trying to find um, places. <laughs> but uh, if, if you all have any um, suggestions, um, I would love it if you could send it my way. I did put my information in the chat. Thank you. Thank you so much and welcome to Carroll County. Thank you. Ms. Lori Thomas, you're next, please, ma'am. Just uh, Lisa pretty much shared the peer support information that, that CMHA has going on right now. Um, but I do want to mention that Thursday night is um, at the Carrollton Fair, it's CMHA Proceeds Night. So um, part of the gate admission um, proceeds will be donated to CMHA. So if you're going to the fair, go Thursday night. Um, the other big thing that we're working on is the Masquerade Ball. It's uh, our annual fundraiser, our biggest fundraiser. Um, and it is October 1st. So it's all hands on deck this next couple of weeks getting ready for that. So um, also a reminder in case you haven't figured out, um, most of the county department's telephone system is out. Um, so all we have right now is a message phone. Um, our regular office phone number, you can call and leave a message and somebody will call you back. Or if you have um, our cell phone number, which I'll put in the, the chat, you can call my cell phone number if you need to get a hold of me. So everybody have a good day. Thanks, Lori. And I'm excited about the ball coming up. Um, Ms. Alexandria, you're next, please, ma'am. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for having me here. Uh, my name is Alexandria Marbury, and I work for District 4 Public Health. I'm the opioid response planner, um, and I just really want to give maybe two short updates of what we have going on. Um, we'll be pushing out a community survey surrounding opioids um, to all of our 12 counties, which includes Carroll County um, in the coming weeks. Um, it's just going to assess the community's knowledge and experiences with opioids and um, also other substances um, that are being abused in our communities. Um, and my second update is that I um, have some grant money that I need to have spent by December. Um, so I'm working on a community awareness event in Carroll County. So I'll be reaching out to a lot of the partners that are on the call right now um, to join us for this event and calling on you all for your ideas. So I look forward to working with each of you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Um, next we have Ms. Dix. I believe that's her name. 
it's Keisha. You are correct, Miss D. Okay. <laughs> Good morning. I am so sorry. I was late to the meeting. I was in another meeting this morning. I understand. Just a quick update. Uh, we are closing the, um, of course, you know, the La, La Heap and the cooling has already closed, but we'll be closing out the La Wap, which is the water program. We'll be closing that out uh, next week. Uh, all programs will start back up on November the 1st when we start with the senior citizens, of course, uh, with the uh, heating program and they have said that they're going to bring the water back, which is a good thing because we got the city of Carrollton to sign on, the city of Villarica, the city of Temple. We even got the city of Bowden to sign on and, of course, her county. So it has been great for those communities, especially with the senior citizens, you know. Even though your water bill may only be $30, guess what? That's 30 more dollars you can spend on groceries. So it has really, really been a great program. And I was so happy to uh, get a lot of the people to sign on. So maybe that will, hopefully they'll bring it back. They have said that they were and, and everything like that, along with the heating program. But at the end of September, of course, we close out all programs and we'll start back up um, November the 1st. Thank you, ma'am, and I know that help is much appreciated. Mr. John Murphy. Good morning. I'm John Murphy. I work for the Department of Community Affairs, the Georgia Rental Assistance Program. I'm the outreach coordinator, and my territory covers 10 counties, Carroll County being one of my counties. Uh, two of the updates I have is, um, one, our first funding uh, is going to be ending September of this month, but we have plenty more in ERA2 funding. The best thing about that a lot of people are not aware of is it's less stringent. So if anybody has a financial issue, they can apply for uh, rental assistance. But one thing a lot of people are not realizing is that they can just apply for utility help. So if you have people out there who are just looking for utility help, uh, they can apply for this program and get assistance uh, through this program also. And another unknown um, aspect, if you have people out there who are, um, if they've already lost their home due to eviction, uh, they didn't have rent to pay, uh, they would be eligible for this program. We can help with any storage costs they have, uh, temporary housing, uh, deposits of a new place, uh, application fees also. And another uh, third aspect of the program that a lot of people don't realize that I want to stress out on this program is that uh, if uh, if a person was had to move out due to a domestic violence uh, issue, uh, this program would also they would automatically qualify for help from this program. Also, the only thing the program does not help with is that finding them that place, that new place to live there. But we can help with the application fees, deposits, first month's rent, and going forward, future months assistance. Uh, utilities, uh, there have been a change is that you, if you have a current utility bill, in other words, you're not behind in utility, but you just got your new bill and you just can't afford a bad bill, uh, now the program, we will pay for that current bill. It doesn't have to be in arrears now. Um, so that's been an update with the program. And uh, we do have an event coming up with one of our partner agencies that uh, I'm helping with. It's going to be at the library. I think Gail has already uh, posted the flyer. And that's going to be next week on the 27th and 28th from 10 to 2, I believe. Thank you very much, Mr. Murphy. Some good information there. Um, uh, can I ask Mr. Murphy a question? Yes, ma'am. Um, Good morning, Mr. Murphy. This is Keisha Dix with Community Action. I um, And you said this is the ERA2 program? Yes. Uh -huh. And do uh, we go on the website just as before as if we were helping, uh, because we have partnered with the GRA and uh -huh. now we are helping, uh, you know, fill our application for potential clients. Right. So we go to the same uh, website. Yes, ma'am. You would you fill out just as if they were looking for rental assistance. Um, I'm not sure if they changed the website. Uh, you would still click if for some reason or another, I'm not sure if they change it, but you would just fill it out the same way you would fill it out as if you're looking for rental assistance, but you would just, uh, you'd still have to upload the lease, the other documentation, um, but you would just 
note in there that you just need to run all systems. I mean, the okay. all business. We have a young lady. I got the phone call yesterday, and I when you said about domestic uh, violence, I got the phone call yesterday. This young lady will be leaving the uh, shelter uh, on the twenty third. Will this will this part work for her as as far as because she has not found a place to live because of the income situation? She has a barrier there, but will the ERA to help her? because she has a six-month-old, will it put her up in a motel possible until she can find a place? Uh, yes and no. The program, as far as getting that in information, the, the the funds and getting that information to us, it takes anywhere from two to three weeks. And, so, that's, what and, I, and that's what I told my uh, support staff. I told her that part. Yeah, yeah but the, the short answer is yes but we it's not uh quick and it is, yeah there. that's why I, I i informed her of that yesterday but i just wanted to make sure just in case we may have to uh put her in a hotel until then okay but yeah i'll shoot you off an email when we get off here okay thank you thank okay. you thank y'all very much um gila lisa text me she forgot something while ago lisa what did you forget honey in the meantime, um, Mr. Murphy, I would like to talk to you afterwards, if that's okay. Yes, absolutely. Okay, I guess Lisa got caught up with something. Um, that can, I ask Mr. can I ask Mr. Murphy a question? I'm sorry, this is Shannon. Does he, Mr. Murphy, what yes. counties do you cover? Or do, uh, let me just cover, specifically ask, do you cover Upson? Uh, yes, I cover Upson. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to get your information as well because we need you to share at our collaborative. Thank you. I'll put my email in again in the chat. Thank you, sir. And once when we finish, I'm going to send all the information to everyone so everybody will have it. Thank you, Gila. All right, I believe that we are done. Our next meeting will be October the 18th, same I time, same place. Ms. Gila, go right ahead. I just want to share something because it is important that you guys know about this. Is, that right? is it sharing or not? It is. Yeah, it is. Can you see the 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 website or website? Okay. So I just want you to see that we have the resources guide here, the assistance program, and we have all the community, all the can you see the food and all the things? Uh yes, ma'am. If uh, Keisha, could you let me know if I have the correct information over there too, please? And Mr. Murphy as well. And one of the things that I uh, we have been working with is with the THS. And now we have created a, a form that you can just go and click. You go directly to, um, to their website. And this is the, the, the application and people who need uh, assistance at THS can go directly to that. Uh, the reason we were able to do that is because of the partnership we have with the THS and with all the agencies that help us uh, provide all the information to our community. So you can have legal assistance there, all of it, uh, the new mobile clinic, but also the events, everything that you guys share with us we try to put it on our events and if if for instance um you know the the information is there uh if we want to email miss williamson the, the email is there um please register for the qpr we need more people uh i know that it is a tough day but it is um um we have a specifically asked that we are going to be doing two uh, community conversations or education awareness events. And we do it on the on the fifth Thursday of the month of March and September. And, and that we all collaborating, we are going to be doing great. And uh, on the 29th, we have different events. Remember, you can attend the QPR, then go to Villa Rica to Tanner's event. And then there's another one. What is the out oh, and the and the fair for the CMHA? So please do um um, try to, to go to our website and we always send the e-newsletter and it is very important if you can see the e-newsletter, see the things that are going on. 
I'm very happy that uh, um, a lady that I, I really don't know how she got into the subscription to the or new e newsletter, but she was very happy to see something that she could find everything that is going on in our county. So thank you. As I said earlier, Gila is doing a wonderful job on the website. Um, I mean, it's, it's just great. Everything you, everything you could need is on that website. So anything we discussed here today is on there. Um, and it has the call information and everything for everybody that you need. So like I said, our next meeting is October the 18th. Um, if everybody is, nobody has anything else, um, we'll go. And I'll see y'all next month. Bye, guys. Thank you. Thank y'all for coming. Bye-bye. Great one. Bye-bye.